Hey, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and today I'm going to be taking one of these eight LED 50 watt lights from Sansi LED and making a really nice adjustable boom arm for it to make a spot welding light for my table. Check it out. Okay, so I got this light from uh, Sansi. It's a LED company. They reached out to me through Instagram, I think, or through email, and they asked me if I wanted to try any of their products. They sent me this, and it's super bright. It's great. It doesn't have a switch, which is kind of annoying, but what I want to do is when I'm welding, it's kind of like a dark spot over here, so I want to basically take the concept of a movable light like this and make this into it. What I'm going to add is this little plug-in switch so that I get some switching capability, some on off out of this. It's super, super bright. I'll show you how bright it is. Look at that. Look at the difference. So real simple, I'm gonna weld up some steel. Okay, so starting off, I wanted to base the height of this arm on the actual length of the cord. It was about 45 inches, so I made the total length of the steel that I was using for the vertical and sort of horizontal movable section about 40 inches. I'm going to be making this out of 16th wall 1x1 one one and 8th wall 1x1. One one. The clamp that I'm making right now is based on the length of the 3 8 screws that I have in stock. I think they were like 4 inch screws and basically I'm just making a letter C with miters on either side of it so that I can make it a little more low profile when it's on the table. I'm gonna be capping all my tubing with some eighth inch, uh, one inch plate steel and drilling holes using one size above a three eighths inch drill bit, which is about a 13, 30 seconds um, so that I get a little bit of a clearance fit but nice and tight nonetheless. Now this little clamp is important that it's nice and square and strong, which is why I went with the eighth inch material for this versus the 16th. And I'm also gonna be using a piece of three quarter inch tubing and that's gonna be what this whole thing pivots on. So I wanted to use the 16th wall for the vertical and horizontal section so that they can nest and telescope right on top of that tubing and um, pivot easily without having to do any milling or drilling or anything like that. I'm using these squares um, that Brandon from Ali Iron sent me. They've been fantastic. I've been using them on all my welding projects. Um, there'll be a link down in the description to pick them up. And they're just awesome to have on the table uh, for squaring things up and for just clamping too. You can see right now um, the little clamp that I'm building, the C-clamp, is done. Just welded those mitered corners and now I'm positioning the round tube that the whole thing's gonna pivot on. Now it's important that this thing be very square, so I'm using a little spacer bar underneath the material and some clamps to use all the reference angles that I can off of these triangles from Ali Iron. And again, they make it super easy and pretty much idiot proof to get things square and plumb. And I can weld this up fully once it's tacked and my clamp thing um, is ready to go. I also welded on a little 3 8 16 weld nut to the bottom, which is nice because it's gonna give me positive pressure against the metal of the clamp itself so that that screw can't pull out and it's a little bit stronger than tapping the 1 8 inch thick material. Um, by using a full weld nut, I'm gonna get a lot more threads and a lot more surface area for those threads to grab so I can really get a good hold. And like I said, I'm capping the ends of these mitered tubes with some eighth inch by one plate, and that's just gonna give it a little bit cleaner of a look. I've got more eighth inch by one right there that I drilled some holes in, and I'm able to clamp that to the sides of the movable part, the upper or horizontal part of the arm, and use it as a reference to mark out where I'm gonna drill my holes in my other piece of one by one. Now this is all pretty straightforward cutting and drilling of steel. Like I said, I'm drilling a slightly oversized hole here so that my 3 8 um, hardware will fit through it easily. And I'm checking everything before I weld these two little bars on and making sure that there's enough clearance for these things to pivot. Once they're tacked into place, I can fully weld them and everything's going to still move very freely. 
Again, I'm using a 3 8 inch weld nut that I got from McMaster Car here. And weld nuts are just a non-coated steel nut with some little tabs so that they sit nice and flat. If you're gonna do anything involving hardware, I recommend that you just buy maybe 25 weld nuts. Um, it helps you from having to grind off the zinc and you don't have to breathe in that horrible coating if you do um, just weld regular hardware, store hardware. Now I also got these 3 8 16 uh, thumb screws. These are kind of knobs that are rubberized and plastic from McMaster. And what I did there was I just took some red Loctite and I put it on them so that they would basically turn into a, a post with a knob on it. And while that red Loctite is drying up, I can continue to work and weld another nut to the bottom side of a one by one little piece of plate. And that's going to get welded in to the top of this post. And once that's welded into the top, it's gonna to give me a nice solid thread beneath the surface so that from above, it just looks like a tap piece of plate, but there's a nice uh, nut in there that it can really thread into. And that's gonna hold the light itself. With everything welded up, I head over to my little grinding area and I just head at it with a uh, 80 grit flap disc. This is from Benchmark Abrasives. Thank you to Benchmark um, for supporting my shop and sending me discs and stuff. They have a fantastic 10 pack of 80 grit or 40 grit zirconium flap discs. It's like under $20. It is the best price you are gonna get flap discs for and I use them on everything. They last extremely well. With that Loctite dried up, I can cut the ends off this hardware and get my clamp nuts and bolts into their final position. You can see how easily the 16th wall tubing spins around on that piece of pipe sticking out. And I can kind of do my first test assembly here where I put the things together and make sure that I get a good enough grab to uh, hold this arm at any position, even with the weight of the light in there. So I did have to drill out the bottom of the bracket that came on the Sansi light to use the 3 8 hardware, but once it was drilled out, I was able to get this uh, 3 8 by one inch bolt in there, no problem. And you can see how positionable it is, and I've got that cord sort of right where it needs to be at the very end, and I can use the plug-in switch that I mentioned earlier and a little two-foot extension cord to give me just enough accessibility. Now what I noticed right away was that there was a really bad glare off the front of the lens. It just has no shrouding and no hood on it. So in order to keep myself from constantly being blinded by it, came over into my little sheet metal area and I bent up a little hood uh, using the shear and the magnetic brake from Bailey. This is just some 18 gauge mild steel and I'm bending it into a little U shape here. Um, I initially thought that the U shape would be enough, but it turned out that I also wanted a little crossbar on the bottom. Now I could have bent the entire thing on the Bailey uh, magnetic brake, but since I kind of thought of it after the fact, I had to cut it and weld in a little, a little extra piece. I cut some 45s here just to kind of stylize it a little bit, make it look a little less clunky and bulky. And then I cleaned it up with acetone and I used some VHB tape to mount this piece of steel around the outside of the LED shroud. Now these things do generate some heat. I'm not sure if this is going to make them burn out prematurely, um, but we'll see. I'm hoping, you know, I was given these things to test, so if this burns them out, then I'll just report back to the company and let them know that uh, they need to make some sort of plastic hood or something vented. And you saw how I put that little piece of sheet metal along the bottom. That's going to help me deal with that little bit of glare. And now I can basically put this thing into position on the corner of my table where it belongs. Really straightforward build, super bright light, and I'm extremely happy with how it came out. All right, that about does it for this project. This was pretty straightforward, uh, very simple in its fabrication, but uh, what it's gonna do for my welding setup and just the amount that I can see when I'm working on the metal table is gonna be huge. Thanks again to Sansi LED for providing me with these lights. There'll be a link down in the description to buy these from Amazon. They're like under 40 bucks. Absolutely worth it for the type of brightness you get out of it. A little bit of fabricating involved, but I will tell you this, before I made this arm, I just had a long clamp and I had this thing clamped to the end of the long clamp. That's what sort of inspired this whole project. Um, I'm really glad I made this little metal shield for around the lenses because they do put off a lot of kind of side light. If you look at them from any angle, they'll blind you like immediately. So that's gonna be a huge help. Overall, 
this thing is going to be a great improvement for my visibility here at the welding table. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see behind the scenes stuff, what I'm doing in the shop on a daily basis, follow me on Instagram. I post on my story every day and I'm always giving a behind the scenes look what I'm doing. Um, I answer questions. I show some tools and sort of show the different places I go uh, throughout my day to day you know, operations here and, and in my life and stuff like that. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with someone if you think they would benefit from watching it, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Again, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks.